Hi, it's Wednesday, the 17th of November. I'm looking at my Magnificat today, and it shows in this uh, Daily Help, this book that helps you follow the Word. Uh, you can read all the readings if you'd like every day by just getting one of these mailed to you, the Magnificat magazine. It's a month's, of months readings and prayers. The prayer today, it's also in our priest's missal for the saint of the day. O God, by whose gift St. Elizabeth of Hungary recognized and revered Christ in the poor, grant that through her intercession that she may serve with unfailing, that we may serve with unfailing charity like she did to the needy, to care for those who are afflicted. Inspired by Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We're going to hear the rough story now from 2 Maccabees chapter 7 of how badly a uh, the uh, Maccabeans were treated, and the seven sons and the mother, uh, Judas Maccabeus, they're going to, well, you're going to hear it now. It happened that seven brothers with their mother were arrested and tortured with whips and scourges by the king to force them to eat pork in violation of God's law. This is a B.C. story. This is when the Jews are rising up and trying to have nationalism and faith again, but they're opposed, of course, by the secular powers, and they're trying to make them to do this disgusting thing to their faith, to eat the pork and do other things, to renounce God and his law. They had food laws back then. We don't follow things as strictly in the New Testament as they did then, but it says... Most admirable and worthy of everlasting remembrance was the mother who saw her seven sons perish in a single day, yet bore it, bore it courageously um, because of her hope in the Lord. Filled with a noble spirit, she stirred her womanly heart with manly courage. She exhorted each of them in the language of their ancestors with these words. I do not know how you came into existence in my womb. It was not I who gave you the breath of life, nor was it I who set in order the elements of which each of you is composed. Therefore, since it is the creator of the universe who shapes each man's beginnings, as he brings about the origin of everything, he in his mercy will give you back both breath and life, because you now disregard yourselves for the sake of his law. And then uh, she, uh, she, she's opposing Antiochus, um, who's very upset about her, her stand and can't believe that she's still holding on to her faith, um, even under all this affliction. Well, I guess that Christianity has been afflicted in places and in times, and particular Christians have been treated very badly for their belief. And when they hold on and keep their faith, it is an amazing witness um, because the people of the world don't get it. They don't understand the existence of a true God that people would live for. Here in America, we're seeing the decline of religious faith and observance of a divine order, a divine law and laws of the country that would match up to the laws of God. Instead, we have laws that are directly in opposition to God. And people ask in America to do things now that are abhorrent or, or just dead wrong. And we try to speak up and, and help the government get corrected. Uh, but in the end, we belong to the church. And the church is a group of people who are to try to keep faith in, in our circle in our in our fellowship and to try to show that there is someone mightier to serve than than man it is our god but in serving god then we try to be of great help to our neighbor not to compromise faith though or morals but to love in truth and sincerity of heart i wish you that i wish me that to try to do that amen